So the New York Rangers have just defeated the Carolina Hurricanes in Game 7 of their second round playoff series here in the 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs. It was a 6-2 victory at the hands of the Rangers, and this video where we're talking about the game and everything and the conversations that people were having about how the Carolina Hurricanes are a good team and the Rangers are not that good, therefore the Hurricanes should come out here and win in four or whatever— this video doesn't need to be too long because this series was more of a product of the Carolina Hurricanes really not playing to their potential, rather than the New York Rangers going out there and pulling a huge upset victory to shock the entire hockey world. Sure, it takes skill to beat a team 6-2. to two. Sure, it takes skill to win in the playoffs and make the third round, and I don't take that away from New York. It's just... I really don't think the Rangers played the best version of the Carolina Hurricanes here in this series, and that sentiment really echoed throughout this Game 7 as well. Furthermore, I think you could go out there and confidently say that had the Hurricanes actually played better on the road, they would have had a likely higher chance at taking this series earlier on, because... Man, this series was Vancouver-Boston 2011. The home game wins games 1-6, to and then the Game 7 is won by the away team. The New York Rangers, a squad that wouldn't die and that would just take things over in Madison Square Garden, take the mojo back, get some goals on the board. Igor woke up. And to be fair, I mean, it's not really like Igor wasn't awake heading into this series because he was pretty good towards the end of the Pittsburgh series, I would say. And you have the fact that the Carolina Hurricanes did not score more than two goals in six of the seven games here against the Rangers. And it just goes back to that main point I was talking about earlier. The Carolina Hurricanes just did not play their best. This is a team that has three pretty good centers up top. You've got Sebastian Ajo, you've got Vincent Trocek, you've got Jordan Stahl. There are some good players on this team, and we know what they're about. It's just... This series saw them completely get shut down, and I know you could say, oh, it's because Igor is just too gosh darn good, but part of it has to be the team taking the shots as well, because the Carolina Hurricanes had a lot of shots in these games over here, and ultimately, guess what it takes for them to lose in a Game 7 early on, and I'm saying early on, because by the time the second period was halfway over, this game was already over. Special teams. The Carolina Hurricanes were a very good defensive team this season, the New York Rangers also so, but when it came to the power play that went out there and did their thing, hey, guess what? They didn't do their thing. The Carolina Hurricanes ended up losing out on power plays, on PKs, they were letting in goals on the penalty kill earlier on in this game over here, which is ultimately what crushed them because they could not get their momentum back afterwards. And it sucks for fans that are watching a Carolina Hurricanes team that was so good and so amazing in the regular season fail to get over the hump once again. And when I say that the game was already over, like halfway through the second period, whatever, you could tell based off of the fans in the building. I didn't know this until reading a few forums here today, but apparently in Raleigh, North Carolina, the arena they play in, there are only two main exits, something like that. If anybody wants to go out there and correct me in the comments, and please go ahead and do that. Or, excuse me, not in the building, but in the parking lot. Because these two exits in the parking lot get clogged up so easily, it makes a lot of fans want to leave the games early if they realize, okay, our team has no chance of coming back. It's a lost cause to stick around here because if we wait until the game is over, then yeah, okay, these exits are going to be clogged up even more, so let's just leave. And that's sort of demoralizing as a fan to see live in the building as well as on TV, right? Like, it's Game 7 of a Stanley Cup playoff series. Like... I know you guys are losing, but come on, that is kind of wild. The last seconds of your team on home ice for the season and you decide to leave to beat the traffic. That's kind of wild. But either way, I want to end this video off here. The Carolina Hurricanes really did not go out there and play their best. It doesn't help that they were playing backup goaltending the entire way through. Frederick Anderson being here against Boston, against New York definitely would have changed things, but you're dealt with the hands that you're dealt with, and the Carolina Hurricanes, it appears that everybody made peace with that heading into this series and after these games as well. And despite that fact, it's not like Auntie Ranta could have scored any goals anyway. This team still did disappoint in the best way possible for the Rangers, and they took advantage of that. It's just going to be interesting, because heading into the third series now, we have a Rangers team that has played off against Louis Domingue for the majority of their Pittsburgh series, and then Auntie Ranta for the majority of their Carolina series, and I say the majority because the only time Ronta wasn't playing was because he was either pulled or taken out of the game completely. So, 
The Rangers have had some good luck when it comes to the goaltending matchups they've faced, and it's all going to come crumbling down when it's Vasilevsky versus Shashirkin because you got two brick walls going up against each other. But that's a conversation for the next video on the channel here. Rangers fans, it's awesome to see you guys get on the board. Adam Fox woke up. He scored himself another goal in a game seven. He's got a whole bunch of points. You have yourselves. Chris Kreider, who had a very nice tap in in front by Mika Zibanejad on the shot. It was two power play goals early on in the game, and that set the tone for the rest of the night. You then had all the other goals later on. Chris Kreider on the breakaway, the backhander. You had Philip Schiedel going five hole. Very nice showcase of effort and will by the Rangers. But at the end of the day, this is Primer. You can celebrate the win right now, but make sure you get back over to the chopping block because the Rangers are amongst the final four with Edmonton, Colorado, and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about this game. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry for this video not being all too detailed or analytical. I just kind of wanted to get some thoughts out there because I really do think that the Hurricanes lost this series before the second period even began. Heck, you could even debate the first period. And bye.